Rondale Moore made one of the most incredible catches we have ever seen. But if you followed Rondale's story and knew of him in college, this was something you expected. Moore has had a breakout rookie season and looks like one of the best young receivers in the league at the moment. I knew he was going to be a star and he is showing it right now as he has been making superhuman play after superhuman play his entire career. I am making today's video because most of you guys probably don't know much about Rondale Moore. You may know him on the Cardinals right now, you may have heard of him in college, or maybe he's a player you heard about in April during the draft, but we're going to tell his entire story, how he almost went to a completely different school, and why he is the best receiver in his school's history. But before we can tell the entire story of Rondale Moore and why he has such a bright future in the NFL, we need you guys to do one thing, and that's to subscribe. Nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed for this season, so be sure to do that for me. Smash that like button for the algorithm and turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now, let's get started and talk about the rise of Rondale Moore. The video clip you're about to hear is from a video I made about him over a year and a half ago, so I apologize for the difference in my voice. Rondale grew up in New Albany, Indiana, a small town along the Ohio River just north of Louisville. He was born premature and was actually hooked up to an IV for three weeks, and his mom said he had to have the fighter's mentality from the very beginning. He was the youngest of 12 kids, and he actually grew up five doors down from his best friend, a kid named Romeo, Romeo Langford to be exact. In case you guys don't follow college basketball or the NBA, Romeo Langford was a former five-star recruit and a McDonald's All-American basketball player who played at Indiana University and is now a rookie for the Boston Celtics. And it's crazy that Indiana's two best college athletes in 2018 grew up right down the street from one another. But yeah, that's why Rondale liked basketball, and he ultimately pursued it well into high school, but eventually, he would have to make a decision. He would watch his coaches such as Tom Crean, Matt Painter, and John Calipari would come to his games, but they weren't there to see him play. His dream was to one day play in the NBA, but he would need a major growth spurt in order for that to happen. He finally accepted the fact that maybe it just wasn't going to happen for him and he needed to reevaluate things. Moore was a better football player and he was too short to ever play high level college basketball, so he had to pick one. He ended up choosing football because he had a better chance to make it big and he was honestly better at it. Because of that, he had to make the difficult decision to transfer high schools and leave all his friends behind. After he helped his team win the state championship in basketball, he jumped across the river to Louisville and settled on the prestigious Trinity Catholic Academy, which was known as a football powerhouse in the area. He was making the best decision for his future, but he didn't know if it was going to pay off. Current Purdue head coach Jeff Brom grew up in Louisville, went to Trinity High School, played for the Cardinals in college, and spent time in the XFL before he took up coaching. So yeah, Jeff was a local legend in the area, and he was arguably Trinity's most famous football alum. Because of that, Rondale knew who Brom was, and he thought he was pretty cool. Sadly, things didn't start off cool for Rondale though, as his transfer didn't exactly go smoothly. The Kentucky State High School Athletics Association thought something fishy was going on with him and declared him ineligible for his junior year. They did this because they said he was such a dominant player that he must have been recruited in an illegal way. This really hurt Rondale because a high school player's junior year is the most important as it's the year you collect the best film, go to camps, and personally, he needed to prove that his size wasn't going to be an issue. Sadly, there was literally no film of him in a Trinity uniform as he wasn't even allowed to practice with the team. So while he was sitting in the press box taking notes, his former best friend Romeo Langford was dominating the basketball world and had become a consensus top 5 recruit in his class. This could have been a moment where Rondale took a turn for the worst, but his personal trainer made it a goal to keep more on track and for him to focus on the positive things. He had one of the best high school offensive coordinators in the country and he got to focus on learning the system and eventually, after many appeals, he was deemed eligible to play in the postseason. The Rondale Moore hype had begun as he had over 400 yards in receiving and 10 touchdowns in just those 4 games. After that, schools from all around the country began to invest their resources into getting him on their teams. His stock really took off as he ran a 4.3 at the Nike opening and he was the fastest high school player in the country. Ivy League schools even took notice as he was not only a gifted athlete, but also a really smart kid in the classroom. As a senior, Rondale flat out dominated. He caught 104 passes for 1,461 yards and 16 touchdowns in the receiving game, while also rushing for 537 yards and 7 touchdowns, and returning 2 punts for touchdowns. He led the team to a 15-0 record, a state championship, and was named Kentucky's Gatorade High School Football Player of the Year. Here's the part that most people don't know though. Rondale was originally a Texas Longhorn. Rondale was wanted by every big name school in the country, but he first settled on the Longhorns in the burnt orange uniform. He actually committed to Texas before his senior season even started, but he seemingly rushed his decision. The Texas faithful had a bad feeling though, as Moore never signed his letter of intent in the early signing period, and he was rumored to potentially decommit. 
At the same time, the coach that I was talking about earlier, Jeff Brom, was becoming a bright young head coach in the college football world as he had led Western Kentucky football to arguably its best era ever. Purdue was still coming off arguably its worst era in program history as head coach Daryl Hazel had completely run the program into the ground. Once Hazel was fired, the Boilermakers brought in a new athletic director and they hired Jeff Brom to be their next coach. Jeff led the Boilermakers to a 7-6 record in his first year in West Lafayette and they won the Foster Farms Bowl against Arizona. He'd taken one of the worst programs in Power 5 to a bowl in his first season, and Brom was starting to gain some momentum on the recruiting trail. Eventually, many people thought that Rondale was going to decommit from Texas, and they were completely right. He was invited to the prestigious Army All-American game and announced that he was going to make his decision on live TV. In one of the most iconic moments in Purdue football recruiting history, Rondale picked up the Purdue hat and said Boiler up for the whole country to hear. Many probably thought he was making the wrong decision, or that he was stupid for picking the Boilermakers, but he knew what he was doing all along. In the meantime, his buddy Romeo was dominating his senior year of basketball and eventually committed to stay home and help bring Purdue's rival Indiana back to glory. Going into the 2018 college football season, the Boilermakers had a ton of hype around the program and they were expected to compete for the second place in the Big Ten West. They did lack playmakers and experience though, so Rondia was going to get a chance to do big things from the very beginning. The Boilermakers were set to kick off the college football season in a Thursday night showcase against the Northwestern Wildcats. I was lucky enough to be in attendance for this game, and it was such a fun night. Rondale's first career catch, he put a defender on stilts, and a few plays later, he caught his first career touchdown pass. The following drive, Rondale took a jet sweep 76 yards for a touchdown, and the college football world was witnessing the birth of a star. Purdue went on to lose that game, and then lost their next two games by way of game-winning field goals. One of them was a terrible loss to Eastern Michigan, and the other was to Missouri, where Rondale would also catch 11 passes for 137 yards and a touchdown. He continued to break out and caught two more touchdowns in an upset win over number 23 Boston College. He had two more big games against Illinois and Nebraska, and Purdue was back to 3-3. Three and three. Now he was going to be on college football's biggest stage, as the Boilermakers were set to face number 2 Ohio State in a primetime matchup. Fueled by Tyler Trent, Purdue played one of their best games in program history and dismantled the Buckeyes 49-20. In that game, he caught 12 passes for 170 yards and two touchdowns, one of which was one of the best plays of the 2019 season and was truly remarkable. Personally, I was also lucky enough to be at this game too, and it'll likely be the best college football game I'll ever attend. From there, Rondale was a star, and Purdue football was cool in the eyes of the casual fan, in large part thanks to him. They lost a close game to Michigan State the following week, and then he helped them knock off number 19 Iowa by way of a last second field goal. They lost a blowout game to Minnesota on the road, and then lost a heartbreaker to Wisconsin in three overtimes. He finished the year with a huge game against his rival Indiana, and Purdue was headed back to a bowl game, as they got absolutely humiliated by Auburn in the Music City Bowl, 63-14. Rondale put up video game type numbers his first year, as he got 114 passes for 1,258 yards and 12 touchdowns. He was the third player in Big Ten history to catch over 100 passes in a season. He broke Purdue records for all-purpose yards in a season, and he was named the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, Big Ten Rookie of the Year, a first-team All-American, and the recipient of the Paul Hornig Award for the nation's most versatile player. Going into the 2019 season, Purdue was expected to compete in the Big Ten West, and Rondale Moore was a serious Heisman contender. The Boilermakers continued to recruit well at the wide receiver spot as they brought in four-star recruits Milton Wright, TJ Sheffield, and David Bell. No one really thought these kids were going to have to play much as freshmen, but they were wrong. The Boilers dominated Nevada for three quarters in their first game, but they blew the game and lost by way of a last second field goal, a new norm it seemed. In his next game against Vanderbilt, Moore caught a career high 13 passes for a career high 220 yards and two touchdowns, and somehow he was getting even better than last year. Their quarterback Elijah Sindelar was injured, so freshman Jack Plummer had to start their next game against TCU. The offense played terrible, and the Horned Flogs blew Purdue out. The undefeated Golden Gophers came to town next, and the worst case scenario happened. On the same exact play, quarterback Elijah Sindelar went down with a season-ending injury, and Rondale ended up hyperextending his hamstring. He was also done for the year. From there, the Boilermakers' season was essentially over as they went 4-8, but on the bright side, true freshman David Bell emerged as one of the best wide receivers in college football, and now the Boilers have one of the best receiver duos in the country. Unfortunately, we get to see very little of those two, as before the 2020 season would happen, we had a lot of stuff go on in the world, and Rondale Moore decided to opt out. He eventually would opt back in after a lot of backlash. He played in three games. In those three games, he definitely went off, though. 
He'd only appear in three games, but he certainly made his presence felt in those games. He had 15 catches for 116 yards against Minnesota, while also running the ball three times for 20 yards and a touchdown. That was a pretty insane game, and Moore helped his draft stock. The following week against Rutgers, he caught seven passes for 66 yards, and then to finish his collegiate career at Purdue, he caught 13 passes for 78 yards against Nebraska. In three games, the guy caught 35 passes for 270 yards, and he was legitimately superhuman. He also went down, in my opinion, as the best receiver in Purdue history. While statistically he may not be, there was no player more electrifying than him, and he was going to inevitably have a big career in the NFL. As we flash forward to April, he really started to blow up as a superhuman-like player, but for some reason he was not seen as a first-round pick. While there were some mock drafts who had him going late, he would eventually fall on draft night. Whether by luck or by design, Moore fell all the way to the 49th overall pick by the Cardinals, and it seemed like a match made in heaven. Combining Cliff Kingsbury, a young star quarterback in Kyler Murray, and all those weapons, Moore was going to have the opportunity to contribute right away, while also not having a ton of pressure on him. According to a lot of people, he really played well in fall camp, and he was going to have a role during his rookie year. He would appear in his first game against the Titans, as he would catch four passes for 68 yards. He wouldn't catch his first touchdown pass until week two, as against the Vikings he caught seven passes for 114 yards and one touchdown. This was a huge play for him, and he went viral for just going over a couple defenders. His numbers did fall off a little bit the next two weeks, as against Jacksonville and the Rams he only caught a combined five passes, but this past weekend against the Niners, he went off. He had five catches for 59 yards and had the play of the day in the NFL. Kyler Murray scrambled and threw a ball to Moore, and not only did he somehow shake loose from his defender, but he caught an incredibly tough ball to catch and somehow managed to get two feet down. This broke Twitter and social media, and everyone has been talking about Rondale Moore since then. I've seen his name pop up a lot in terms of fantasy football, and he's been one of the best rookie receivers in this class. So far in the year, he's caught 16 passes for 211 yards and a touchdown, and at this rate, he's probably going to be nearly a 1,000-yard receiver. Not only that, but the Cardinals are the last remaining undefeated team, and right now, a lot of people think they can get to the Super Bowl. Roundale Moore has always won and always put up big numbers, and it seems like it's just going to continue for him in the NFL. And despite people still counting him out, he always finds a way to make it happen, and I think he is one of the better young receivers, and will be one of the better receivers in the NFL in the coming years. What do you guys think, though? Who is a player I should do next? How good are the Cardinals and Rondale Moore? And what is another topic I should take a look at in my next video? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section, subscribe if you're new here, hit that like button, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.